Hello and welcome to the Manifest to Live Life Golden Show. I am Golden Duffy, your host for this show. Today is going to be all about taking the up level. So I'm flying by the seat of my pants today. I'm really feeling it. I'm really glad and so blessed and grateful to be back with you guys to share some messages that are coming through that will help you to shift and up level your experience here. Now, these may be messages that you've heard before, but this is the thing. We need repetition. We need to be reminded, I would say, a few times a day to keep ourselves in a high vibration where the frequencies that we're tuning into are optimal for our experiences. They're going to bring us the best case scenarios. They're going to bring us the best people, the best energies, the best feelings. Now, we can't be on top of the world all the time. I know. I try really hard. And the truth is, Sometimes you just feel okay. Sometimes you feel a little low and that's okay because that gives us more capacity for joy. That helps us to actually connect with joy because we've got that feeling of contrast, because we've got that knowledge of contrast. You know, it's like when you have a bad day, doesn't have to be a bad day, but when you have a bad day and then you wake up the next day and you're like, okay, this is a new day. We can have a new start. And most people don't actually take advantage of that. They don't take the um, the reins and actually steer their next day into a good day. They're usually just, you know, they're still hanging on to the day before. So if we really want to shift the energy, we have to start asking ourselves some questions and we have to formulate an energy field, a foundation for ourselves that is optimal. Now, um, let me see if I have this in here. I don't know if I do. We are getting ready to launch another M21 challenge. Very excited about that. So you look for, let me just put this in here. Um, wait a minute. Maybe it's in here. The M21 Revolution group on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook at M21 Revolution. And we are starting on August 1st. Now, this is my um, my partner and I, Jess Gumkowski. She is a yogi. She is a triathlete. She is a coach for triathletes. She does retreats. She's absolutely amazing. She's going to launch the challenge with me. It's a 21-day experience where you're going to be asked to sit and quiet your mind every day. I'm actually adding something to the group and I offered my Mindful Manifestations journal. If you have not received one of these, if you haven't bought one from Amazon, our challenge starts on August 1st. So you might not be able to get it in time from Amazon. There was a little bit of drag in the production. So um, I am offering these for $21 shipping included from my house with my signature and a personalized message if you email me at livelifegolden at gmail. So I wanted to, here it is. There's my, there's my email. I wanted to add a little something to this challenge. So we usually just, we meditate, we have posts every day, we do videos. There's tons of guided meditations in there. And I just decided that this challenge needs a little bit of up-leveling, journaling, gratitude, putting ourselves in the right frequency every day. And this book will get you there. You can you can buy your own journal. You can buy a journal from CVS um, or you can use this one because it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I, I love this book so much. I'm so proud of it. Um, it's a journal, but it's also 100 pages of information that will help you to turn, tune into the right frequencies every day. All right. So getting back to our show today. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So where are we today? Where are you today? How are you feeling today? Are you excited? I'm feeling a little excited today. I'm not going to lie. Excited and very calm, if that's possible. So I've just decided to kind of take my health back. I've had some back issues. I dropped a water bottle on my toe. If you didn't hear my show last week, I had a head cold. My husband now has the head cold. I passed that along to him. And so I just decided like today is all about my health. I had a um, an actual a meeting scheduled for this morning that got canceled. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out for a walk in nature. My daughters joined me. It was amazing. I did some yoga. I did some stretching. And I'm just, oh, I'm literally basking in summer. I love summer so much. I can't even tell you guys. Um, I think because we had kind of a long California winter with a lot of rain and chilliness, 
that this 85 degrees feels amazing. I, uh, I've not even been putting the air conditioning on because I'm just basking in the outside and having the doors open. It's funny because my neighbors literally, as soon as it hits like 75, 80, they have their air conditioning on from sun up to like, like 24 hours a day, they have the air going, uh, which I can hear. And I'm like, guys, you've been in your house all winter. Like a little bit of of warmth is not going to kill you. I just can't believe that people stay in their houses when it's so beautiful out. Um, so that's that's one thing that you can do to raise your frequency is get out in nature more, get out and enjoy the sunshine more, and actually allow yourself to receive the vitamin D that sunshine brings. So um, I implore you to get some sunshine. I implore you to not listen to the negativity and the negative stories about the sun and get yourself some good good vitamin D. It's so good for you. It's so healthy for you. It up levels your endorphins. It brings in um, just really good nutrients and it doesn't harm you unless you believe it does. All right, enough about that. I had some downloads about that recently. I won't go real deep into it, but um, what I got is that the sun is actually very, very healthy for us. Now you don't want to go and like you know, sit there and bake all day and dehydrate yourself. But the fact of the matter is, is that sun is good. And if you haven't had that experience and you've been told a different story, you're going to have a different belief system on that. Um, But my belief system is the sun is, it is life giving. And for me, it's just so good for me. It really is. All right. So how do we up level today? I've been recognizing experiences in my life with my family members, with people around me, my friends, you know, my everything that's been going on. I had a really fun weekend. On Friday night, we went to the Bee Gees ABBA concert. It was a tribute band. And quite frankly, I was around a lot of drama all day and all night. There was drama going on all around me. And during that show, I decided that I was just going to stand in my place and dance and not and just get just let go of all the drama. So I'm going to ask you, if you have a lot of drama in your life, there, you know, we all do it, right? We all have these people around us. There's relationships around us. There's things going on around us. But what are you doing to contribute to it? You know, I was contributing to it on Friday by speaking about it, talking about it, talking about what I didn't want. So, um, and then going into Friday night, we actually had our, our girls with us on Friday night. And that can be stressful sometimes. Like there was ticket issues and meeting each other issues. And, you know, it's like herding cats when you're trying to herd young adults. So I just kept asking myself, what would I feel or what would it be like if I didn't respond in stress? And one of my favorite sayings right now is no drama necessary. Like there's no drama necessary when it comes to any part of our lives. It's the belief systems and the energies that we bring to stuff that actually create the drama. So we're the ones that keep the drama going. And if you have a lot of people in your life that complain a lot, you're allowing it. You're absolutely allowing it. You're in the frequency of it. Otherwise, you wouldn't attract it. And you have to start putting some boundaries down. I think that's one thing that this uh, this week showed me is I need some boundaries with some people because I don't want my field infiltrated with drama, right? So one way that I, that I nollied that was to get out of it, was to let go of it, was not to participate in it anymore, which you have the ability to do. Now, you may feel like people don't, you, people will think you don't care about them, but no, your, it, your vibration, your energy is the thing that matters the most. And when you keep handing over that power to other people, that's why you feel like your whole life is dramatic and that everyone around you is dramatic. So if I look outside of me and I see drama and I don't participate in the drama, then I don't take on the drama. The drama does not become me, right? Now, this is not always easy. And one of the ways that we can really get ourselves in a good foundation is to meditate. I've been meditating a lot. One of the reasons because I've had to chill out because of my foot. I haven't, I have not been able to exercise. Today I got back to walking, which felt so good. 
Um, so I've had extra time, plus I had the head cold, so I needed to rest. So I was literally meditating a couple times a day. Uh, this morning and last night, I laid in bed and I just cleared my mind. I'm doing these alpha meditations where you count down from 100 so I can clear my mind very easily. And anytime I woke up last night in the middle of the night, I did that because I've also been having some funky energy at night. So I want you to understand the energy upgrades right now. What's happening in the energy field is stuff is going to be in our face. Like stuff that we need to clear is going to be majorly in our face and we have the invitation to clear it. Or not, you know, we can take it as an invitation to fight with people and be dramatic with people, or we can step back from it and say, what if I didn't respond like I normally do? That is my favorite question, and it shifts the energy field exponentially. One other thing that I've been noticing like in my family, now I was a little complainy last week. I'm not going to lie. I was in a lot of pain with this toe. Uh, my back has been in a lot of pain. This head cold was not optimal. I was not feeling good. So I was a little complainy and people around me would remind me when I complain. Now listen, we can get offended by those things or they can shift us. And I just allow those things to shift me. Now, there's things that I could get upset about, people in my house that are, you know, telling me what I should or shouldn't do and yelling at me from, for doing certain things, or I can respond in, in love. I can respond in kind. I can respond in a way that allows the energy field to move up instead of down. So people can be cranky around us but we don't have to be cranky with them. That's It's like mastery, you guys. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been working on this for a long time. I've had a lot of opportunity with these four daughters to do this. Um, <clears throat> so it's okay if you don't nail it. It's okay if you're not always perfect at it. It's okay. Sometimes I slip. Sometimes I yell. I actually yelled, when was it? Saturday morning, I got a little triggered. I didn't really yell, but I get accused of yelling, which is really funny. Um, because I was told not to touch someone's laundry who keeps leaving their laundry in my space, which supposedly isn't my space, right? Right. Uh, so <clears throat> I got a lot of tri I got a little triggered by that, and then uh, we got into it. We scrapped a little bit, not physically, and then you know I calmed down. My husband and I talked about it, talked about where I went wrong in that situation. And I apologize. We hugged. We told each other we loved each other. And I know as a mother, I know that I am these, this safe and this doesn't, this isn't exactly right. Doesn't have to be right, but it is the way it is sometimes, especially with young adults. If you have a young adults in your life, sometimes you will be their safe place. I mean, with kids basically across the board, the mom, the dad, we're the safe place that they feel like they can fall apart with. And so we don't have to take everything they do personally. And we can offer them that. Now, it doesn't mean we let them yell at us and take advantage of us and walk all over us, but it does mean that we can be in more of a compassionate, forgiving place where we are not making them feel worse than they already do. And we're not making our house feel worse than it does. Like that's one of the big things with me is I want my house to feel good. I want people to feel good when they walk into my house. I don't want there to be awkward energy or angry energy or, you know, can't, I just can't do that. There was a, that was a lot of my childhood was the grudge holding and the silent treatments. And I just won't do that. I just will walk it up to my kids and apologize, take responsibility for what's mine and hug them. You know, eight hugs a day, right? We're supposed to be doing eight hugs a day. That's, that's a great way to raise your frequency. Eight hugs a day. We hug every time we see each other and every time we leave each other. So we're, we're getting up there. I think we're pretty close to eight hugs a day. And they are meaningful hugs. Like we stop what we're doing. We hug with both arms. We connect with each other. And that's a really, really solid thing you can do as a family. It can be challenging if you have a child that doesn't like hugging. But I'm very fortunate that I got a whole house of huggers. I got a whole family of huggers. Thank goodness. All right. Getting back to your vibration and how you set yourself up for success every day. Guys, you got to meditate. I can't say it enough. Please join the M21 revolution. It will give you a great guideline and it will give you a really solid accountability. You know, we're in there every day. We're engaging every day. We really want an engagement in the group. It's a donation-based challenge. So if you ain't got no monies, 
I love the exchange of energy. If you can give, you know, we're asking for a $50 donation. If that's not possible for you, we are accepting that exchange of energy and what you can give. And the exchange of energy of, you know, communicating in the group is also very important. So M21 Revolution um, group on Facebook will help you to do that. Uh, okay, gratitude. So my daughter actually brought to my attention that she has been doing a gratitude um, challenge and how much has changed her life. Just like within three days, she had a thousand dollar manifestation. She just had all this incredible stuff going. So I started thinking about gratitude and I did a whole show on that last week about shifting, you know, these things that were happening to me in my foot and how I kept turning it towards gratitude. I'm so happy it's open toe sandal season, right? And I'm so happy that I only hit the top of my toe and I'm actually almost completely healed. I actually went for a couple mile walk this morning and it's a little sore, but I'm doing much better than I was. And, um, so turning that to gratitude. So I went out yesterday and I bought my husband and I both gratitude journals. And we, before we went to sleep last night, we wrote in them. So you can do it before you go to bed. You can do it first thing in the morning. You can do it both. Like why not set the frequency up for gratitude? This is the thing about problems and issues and challenges and anxieties and fears. You are hyper focused on what you don't want and what is not going well when you're there. When you shift it over to gratitude, you are taking the best parts of life and amplifying them. You're making them more. You are loving what you have instead of being in lack and misery for what you don't. It is one of the most powerful things. I say gratitude is the jet fuel to manifestation because the more we put ourselves in a vibration of abundance the better off we'll be. Now notice what you do with your frequency, your habits throughout the day. So if you have a habit of watching the news, if you have a habit of watching negative things, if you have a habit of fighting with people on Facebook, if you have a habit of listening to complainers, all of those habits, what they're going to do is they're going to drop your vibration throughout the day. And then you're not going to be in that jet fueled manifestational energy. So watch what you're doing. Clean up your acts. Cut down your alcohol. Cut down your weed usage. Whatever it is that you're doing that is lowering your vibration, cut it out or at least cut it down. I cut my alcohol way down, um, feeling so much better, feeling so much clearer. Uh, I know what level of alcohol that I can drink where I won't feel not good from it. So we're getting there. Yeah, yeah. Um, for whatever reason. Still, I'm still okay with it, but I just want it to n just not have any detrimental effects. So if you're doing it, cut it, cut it down a little bit if you're really out of control with that. You know, I went to a concert this weekend. We actually went to a concert on Saturday, another concert Saturday night. It was a, a busy weekend. Uh, we don't normally go out two nights in a row. That's big for these people. Uh, but we went to a reggae, another reggae concert, and it was Ayaterra, who we actually missed. The Movement, who is one of my favorite now reggae bands. They, they have been for a few years, so I was really excited to see them. And they have a really great energy about them. And they have, um, if you've ever heard The Movement, they have Alan Watts sometimes comes on. He's a, back in the day, he was like a personal development guy that says incredible things. And uh, atmosphere, not crazy about them. They were a lot of rap. And the guy actually was very funny. He made me laugh pretty hard about old people getting out of the house. And then slightly stupid. Yeah, slightly stupid. I think it's an appropriate name for them. Um, so we were at the Five Points Theater, which was really cool. We went in the back way, so we didn't hit any traffic. So the ease and flow of this situation, we had one of our daughters with us. Her friends were there, so she had a blast. And uh, we didn't drink any alcohol, which was cool. And we danced a lot. And um, Slightly Stupid got a little dark for me. The movement was very, I mean, uh, uh, atmosphere was very dark. So I am very careful with my vibration. And if I feel like some, if there's an, I almost left one other time. And then at the end, there was like a mosh pit and they did a, uh, tribute to Kurt Cobain and they started doing some really nasty music and people started pounding on the bleachers and I have a fight or flight response baby like I don't feel safe in situations like that especially because the alcohol 
that was going on and Lord knows what other drugs. It was like the drunkest reggae group I had ever seen. Like normally reggae, you know, they're smoking a lot of pot and they're very mellow, but this was a very intoxicated crowd. And I think, you know, I don't want to make conspiracy theories up, but they really do take a long time with these concerts to bring out the opening act, like hours and hours and hours. And I know it's to help up their up alcohol sales, but Man, I just feel like our society needs to get a handle on this alcohol thing because it really, I mean, you're not really having fun and you are definitely ruining your next day. And it's no judgment there. I've been there. I've done it for sure. And I'm really glad that I don't do it because you end up spending half your time in a bathroom line and then you don't feel good the next day and you don't remember the concert. So what's the point? So anyways, protect my energy field. So when that music starts, I ran out. I literally ran out, went to the car. We left. It was great. Some of the music was good. Some of it, not so much. Don't think I'm going to be a slightly stupid fan, which is good because I don't really even like the term slightly stupid. Uh, I don't think being slightly stupid is a good idea. Um, I like to be clear. I like to be smart, right? All right. Moving on. Not sure why I went on that tangent. Oh, to talk about frequency. So everything that you're letting into your experience, everything that you are that you are entertaining. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to be. I have an issue with this, and this is somebody in my life that tries to get me to be this way. If we're trying to be all that and all spiritual and so hard lined and not letting any darkness in or not letting any weird energy in. We're not really having a human experience. One of, I think, our purposes of being here is to navigate the human existence, to navigate human beings that maybe aren't so light, to navigate certain situations that are not so light. Now, with that said, I don't have to expose myself to things like creepy movies or horrible things that are going on in the world. I don't have to do that. But if I do feel called to something, I have um, a daughter who has a really hard time with some of the things that we watch. Now, we've been watching Blacklist for like 10 years, like literally just have not been able to give up the show. And it's, you know, it's, it's a little dark and it's CIA, FBI, black ops, you know, blacklist, bad people. Um, but we just loved it. We loved James Spader and it ended last night and I loved the way it ended, but she's like, you know, mom, sometimes those shows you watch are just so dark. And I'm like, I know. And I'm human. And sometimes I'm going to do that. And I won't watch horror films or, you know, I won't watch like truly horrible things. Um, but there is this human experience that we need to have and all this love and light and just not wanting to pay attention to anything that's of a lower vibration may get you somewhere and may get you to certain places. But if you become fearful of the dark, if you become so um, closed off and trying to protect yourself, I I feel like you're, you're losing the human experience that is part of the spiritual experience. So that's just my, my two cents. Not everybody needs to agree with me, but it's really the way I feel. We are meant to be human. So forgive yourself. You know, it's like, let's not beat ourselves up for being human. If you did drink too much this weekend, like, let's just move on and let's take that as a lesson. If you did smoke too much this weekend, let's take that as a lesson and let's just do better, right? Let's just start over and do better. If you haven't been exercising the last couple of weeks or the last couple of years, Let's just do better. Let's start walking. Let's get out in nature. Let's move our bodies. Let's stretch. One of my favorite things is yoga with Adrian. She's on YouTube. I've been doing her stuff. Love it so much. She's so amazing. She's cute dog, Benji. Highly recommend that if you're just starting to move your body. If you can't stretch, if you can't move, if you can't bend, if your body hurts all the time, you got to start moving it. You know, our physical bodies are important. I was talking to somebody the other day who took their mom um, on a vacation and she's in her early seventies and she couldn't walk much, you know, because she's so inactive in her life. And so she didn't get the quality of the vacation and she actually took away from their vacation. So it's really important for us to stay in shape. You guys, I know I'm going to get off my soapbox on that. Okay. So here we go. What would it be like if I didn't respond the same way? If you could create a little bit of space, meditation is going to help you to do this, but if you could take a deep breath 
if you could just slow down a little bit, if you could just ask yourself, you know, do I have to take this personally? Do I have to get upset by this? Do I have to, you know, yell like I always yell? If you can start doing that and start asking those questions and responding differently, your life is going to start being different. You know, if you have a rascal in your life, okay, I had a, actually had a question on Facebook about this. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's about a situation that uh, has been going on for a long time. And if you're listening, you know who I'm talking to right now. Um, that has been very much a powerless situation. And it has to do with the law and it has to do with custody. And um, this is the thing. If you're in a situation where you have been promoting the same energy over and over again, same responses, same feelings, same energies, you're going to keep getting the same result. You are the one that has to change in the situation and you have to believe that things can change. First of all, your responses have to change. You have to stop taking things personally. You have to start asking yourself, what can I do? Um, what can I do energetically? Especially if you've spent a lot of money and you're feeling like, you know, powerless in that spending money thing. Um, if you're, you know, if you're feeling unjustified, like this is not justice and all those feelings are creating more of it. So you got to start cleaning it up. You got to look for gratitude in the situation. Seriously look for gratitude in the situation and help yourself to shift more often and not respond in the same way. Now, it takes a little while because you have momentum for sure. So if you got a rascal in your life, you got somebody who is constantly pushing your buttons, understand this. They can't push your buttons if your buttons aren't out there, right? You got to pull your buttons back. You got to stop being so easy to upset. You got to stop being so easy to respond and react, right? And then it's working with the energy field to ask yourself, what is good about this? What have I done? How much progress have I made? And if you haven't made progress, it's because you've been putting the same exact energy, the same money, the same attention, the same focus, you've been putting the same energies towards it. And that's why it's not changing. So if you want to change your situation with a rascal, you have to change and you have to start looking at it differently. If you can send them love. Yeah, that transforms situations. If you can send any sort of gratitude to the situation and look for the good in it, that will help to change the frequency. But the major, major part of this is to keep yourself in a really good foundation, is to keep yourself from being stressed, fearful, anxious, all those low vibrational things that just contribute uh, chaos to the energy field and slow the energy field down on solutions for you. All right, so we're going to get into a, um, a really good place now where we can start to we can start to activate a higher frequency. And because the energy field is so upgraded right now, because it is at a very high vibration, you can either stay back in the squabbles, you can stay back in the density, or you can up level into the lightness. So I keep reminding myself, and I'm here to remind you, you are a light body. Are you bringing in light things to your body? Are you bringing in heavy energy? Are you bringing in heavy substances? Are you bringing in heavy thoughts? Are you watching heavy things? You can feel energy. You are energy. We are all an expression of energy. We are an extension of that energy field. So if we can feel energy, start asking yourself, what is heavy in my life? What do I need to let go of? Is it just thoughts and beliefs? Is it just focus? Where do I need to tune myself to help me to feel lighter. Um, food is a big one. If you're eating a lot of heavy, dense foods, now this is like lots of carbs, um, lots of bread products, lots of processed foods, uh, lots of alcohol, lots of uh, soda, sugar. Guys, sugar is like the devil. I hate to do it to you, but honestly, sugar is like it's one of the things that actually ages you more than anything in the world. So start to cut the sugar out. And you know, I'm like, a, I could be a sugar monster. I have a sugar monster inside of me. I love cookies. I love gummy bears. 
Um, I was on a gummy bear kick there for a while, just letting myself be okay with that. And I've just cleaned it out. And I've actually been doing smoothies with fruit in them. And that actually just has totally quelled down my sugar monster. I really don't crave sugar anymore because I've been doing a smoothie with fruit in the morning. So if you want to be lighter, you got to bring in lighter things. If you want your life to be lighter, you got to let go of heavy things. And if it's your job and the way that you make money, you got to start looking for something else or you got to find ways to navigate that job where it doesn't feel so heavy or your boss doesn't feel so heavy or your employees don't feel so heavy. You got to tune into different frequencies of gratitude within that place to shift it and change it. And if it's time for it, if it's time for a change, it's time for a change. And if it's time for a change and you keep like resisting the change, it's going to show up free anyways. So you might as well just, you know, take the bull by the horns and do the thing. You know what I mean? All right. Um, I think that's my show for today. I'll share a couple of more things that are uh, near and dear to me. Well, y'all know I wrote a couple of books, Mindful Manifestations Secrets. That's my first book all about manifesting. You can get that on Amazon. And uh, that's our story for moving from California, from Connecticut to California and all the things that we manifested along the way and the process of manifestation. <clears throat> and then you have my journal and I will send this to you if you want it, if you want to email me, livelifegolden at gmail. Um, this is actually, there's a hundred pages plus there's writing prompts that go along with it. So there's like a whole bunch of pages of journaling and then there's a whole bunch of pages of information for you. So this is a really a solid read. Um, and if you can leave me a review, that would be freaking awesome. All right, live life golden at Gmail. If you want me to send you one of those, let me know. Got a lot of really, really cool stuff coming up, you guys. I'm very, very excited about the life that's transforming. And I think it's also the reasons why I've been able to be more in this allowing state. I feel like I have a plan. We have a plan and moving forward. My husband and I are going to team up and do some stuff and bring you some amazing stuff to the world. And um, yeah, we're just getting started. So I'm pumped about that. I got a lot of ideas that I want to share. So I've kind of pulled back in teachings and all of that stuff because we're ramping up with, um, with a whole new program for you. And I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. Life transformation. And that's what we're going to be doing. All right. So let me know if you have questions, live life golden at Gmail. Also, I have a group on Facebook called uh, Manifest to Live Life Golden. You can join that. And that's where you'll see my posts every day or my personal page, Golden Duffy or Live Life Golden on Instagram. Please go to my YouTube channel, Manifest to Live Life Golden as well and subscribe. Now, there's been a little bit of confusion about the TV show. So the TV show is called The Golden Hour. I'm going to be going live tomorrow at noon Pacific. I'm going to be doing the 12 Laws of the Universe again. I did those in the podcast earlier. This is going to be more about how to apply them specifically, each one specifically in your life. Um, that will be going noon live live at noon tomorrow on Facebook, The Golden Hour, you, my YouTube channel, Manifest to Live Life Golden, under the live section. That's where all my shows are archived. Or you can go on E360 TV and look for Achieve TV. That's a little bit more complicated. My, my YouTube channel would be great for you to like, share, subscribe so that we can get those numbers up in YouTube. And you'll be able to get notifications when my shows are going live. I have had some of the most incredible guests, and I have more coming this Thursday. I've got an incredible guest. I can't even tell you about, I can't even tell you how incredible this is going to be. This is going to be a conversation I've never had before that you will absolutely love. So you can join us on Thursday at noon as well. All right. I love y'all. Peace out. <laughs>